James is still talking about that hmm. over some veggie burgers and mine are coming up right away. I'm just going to let him get talking before yeah. I start eating. They look like real burgers, but don't. No, they're pea protein and they were given to us by the food bank. We're very fortunate. Okay, I didn't know you were uh, filming or whatever. So we're talking earlier. Previous session was actually earlier today. And a session before that, I think it was yesterday, about revolution and dictatorship. And there's the long arm of the lawlessness slamming down on revolution. It should be shown slamming down on people and stuff like that. Levitsky and Lucan Wei, and they are both not flunkies, at least theoretically. Stephen Levitsky is the David Rockefeller Professor of Latin American Studies, Professor of Government and Director of the David Rockefeller Center, so that's the brother, it might be older brother, but, or was a brother of Nelson Rockefeller, former Governor of New York and Vice President of the United States under... Jerry Ford, I believe, so mid 70s. American Studies, uh, Latin American Studies at Harvard University. His in books include How Democracies Die. And unfortunately, he to be a pretty frail kind of critter. And Transforming Labor Based Parties in Latin America. <laughs> Most labor based parties are intelligentsia based parties. Labour Party in England, Commie Party in Soviet Union, the in, increasingly the NDP Party in Canada. So Lucan Wei, co-author of this tome, is a professor of political science at the University of Toronto. Oh, there's one for Canada. The author of Pluralism by Default, Levitsky and Wei are the co-authors of Competitive Authoritarianism. I don't know. That means is it like what the PRC is doing right now? Um, kind of faking being capitalists, and uh, we're really, uh, it's, it's kind of like crony capitalism, it's some characters. But. At any rate, uh, so this guy's thesis, uh, a little better review, there won't be a test on this, so don't worry. Uh, the violent origins of durable authoritarianism. Durable authoritarianism, as far as I'm concerned, should be called totalitarianism. I make a distinction. I draw a fairly strong distinction between the two, although the, the, uh, in reality, in real life, there wouldn't be one. It would be kind of like a uh, continuum between one and the other. And of course, it would continue on. Here's totalitarianism, authoritarianism, and then you work your way down through a variety of different critters and beasts and stuff like that to uh, something like democracy. And, uh, you know, like where there is uh, one person, one ballot, um, freedom of speech, freedom of, well, religion. You know, like uh, freedom of uh, religion should be defined as uh, your freedom ends at your nose. So there's uh, one major religion out there that just uh, sticking its nose into everyone's business. Really, it doesn't like uh, the ringing of church bells, and they've got the Labour Party to go along, and uh, they're crushing uh, church bells getting rung in England. They, uh, and church bells are not native there, but they're way more native than having some guy at the top of a, a lighthouse, uh, inland lighthouse, yipping and yodeling, telling people to come to a worship or prayer or whatever. And uh, uh, crushing down criticism of the religion, uh, 
crushing down, leaving the religion, uh, the technical term for one is blasphemy, the technical term for the other is apostasy. You should have guessed by now the religion I'm talking about. But, uh, you know, like uh, the freedom of religion or the freedom of political association in this one religion doesn't really distinguish between religion and uh, politics, political system, religious system, political system. I know you're skeptical, probably cynical, but do your homework before you visit your slimy cynicism on me. Please. Right. Now, um, yeah, you're going to be hearing that from now until, not eternity, but until the members of the intelligentsia who are on CBC, BBC, and all that other sort of garbage stop saying, making their little points, uh, and uh, their power, and then punctuating them. Right. Right. Anyway, uh, the violent origins of liberal authoritarianism. You know, they're looking at 14 cases here, and I don't think they distinguish too many more uh, cases of revolution in uh, all of the 20th century and into the 21st century. And they had at least four what should have been taken as counterexamples to their thesis. In other words, there were several. Uh, four out of their 14 that were short-lived revolutions or revolutionary regimes. And I say counter-examples, it's, it's not exceptions to the rule because you'd expect a, on their thesis, you'd expect revolutionary regimes which come into power through revolution, through violence, to be at the most violent they're most radical right at the beginning and kind of phase down from there, given their thesis. And yet that's not the way it is. Furthermore, they leave out regimes that I think should have been included. You know, like they're saying, I, I don't know if they picked out East Germany, but all the East German communes after World War II, some not immediately after. The only ones they signaled out as being revolutionary, as I recall, were Albania and Yugoslavia. Huh? You know, what about Czechoslovakia? What about Hungary? What about Bulgaria? What about Romania? What about uh, Poland? What about East Germany? Yeah. You know, and they kind of say, deal with them comprehensively, those things that uh, I guess they consider exceptions to the overall list. Oh, they, that was imposed from without by the commies, you know, they were conquered. But, you know, if you look at the way the commies handled it, uh, the situations, I think in all of them, maybe a different slight, the time frame different than it is. Uh, they had something like a coalition government, so they uh, get rid of the Germans, so-called liberated uh, these countries, including, and as well as Ukraine, and Yellow Russia, White Russia, whatever you want to call it or not call it. Uh, Lithuania, Estonia, so on and so forth. How long? 20? Yeah. Okay, there we go. And uh, they, they would say, hey, we got a coalition government. Uh, it would be just like the coalition government back in 1917 in Russia. <laughs> you know, like we're part of that coalition, revolutionary coalition. Next thing you know, they're uh, overthrowing the. Uh, minority government in terms of name, Menshevik, that's kind of what it means in Russian, Menshevik. And the, it was the Bolsheviks, yeah, it's majority, but of course they were a significant minority in the social democratic movement, and they were the ones uh, doing the overthrowing. So what they were doing when they set up the coalition governments uh, in Eastern Germany after they took them over, is they said, ah, oh, you can have all the portfolios, all we want, is a portfolio of uh, interior, interior 
and oh, uh, we'll take the, the, the army, the, the armed forces. That's all we want. You can have agriculture, you can have industry, you can have education, you can have. Uh, oh, the blue jay is here again. Hey, fella. Hey, we're going to call you a truck. Oh, there he is. You're a good boy. If I get up to show you, yeah. he will go. He's he does kind of not scared like of me pulling. to put the camera on him. He, yeah, it might be the camera. Think He's a good. handsome fella, I'm telling you. The Blue Jays should draft you in the middle of the season, buddy. My heavens. Are you friendly? Do you want to come and the get... The bourbon uh, patty tasted too much like meat for me, but... Yeah, yeah, so sometimes they do that. I had since yesterday, yeah. so I was pretty hungry. Like the, uh, the chicken kind of uh, veggie stuff uh, reminds me too much of chicken. So, you know, it is. Can we call you Toronto? Or T.O.? We'll you, call you T.O. I'm T. seeing so many Blue Jays this year. It's not just the ones that come to our yard. It's, they're around. They're around. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Just, this guy know. presumably Why would have a so character. Many? I'm going to scare him. Maybe. You can talk about your stuff some more. I'm going to see if I can feed this guy in a few seats. Are you hungry, fella? Or do you like food? Here, come on. I'm going to call you T.O., but not Terrell Owens. Oh, okay, you well, well, get rid okay. of you. Oh. I don't know if he saw you or... Well, just sit down and do your talk. Okay. Well, I wanted to see if he wanted to be friendly the way he has been. He's allowed me to get this close to him, or he's come this close to him. Uh, voluntarily, and it's not as though I'm moving on to his territory. Anyway, where was I? Maybe the guy wants to listen. Don't worry, buddy. No test on this, just like I was telling the folks at home. Uh, so yeah, the uh, in Eastern Europe, there seemed to be a similar pattern as there was with uh, these so-called revolutionary regimes who set up others. And what was that pattern? A period of instability, fairly early. So I think in East Germany, 1953, around the time of Stalin's death, uh, I presume it was a little bit after, uh, the East Germans rebel a little bit. Negative. I'm not sure if the Hungarians did at that point in time. 1956, the Hungarians uh, rebelled against Soviet uh, hegemony. And uh, that was crushed uh, pretty effectively. A little bit later is uh, the Czechoslovakia under Alexander Dubček. I don't think they were really rebelling very much. They were just trying to liberalize a little bit and they got crushed pretty compl comprehensively by Leonid Brezhnev and his henchmen. And uh, that one was uh, relatively late. But the, the uh, I mean, communism in only had 20 what is it, uh, 23 years or so to go after that. And it had gone kind of in Eastern Germany. I don't know what it's called. Is he there? You want some food? Food. It's good. You going to come get some food? There yeah, we go. Yeah, he wants it. Come on over. Yeah, he's just behind the camera. Come on over here. Who might feel? That's okay. Right here on the table. There you, you want to be a star? You Come can be on, on the internet. You can be an influencer. Okay. You want some of that food? It's Come and get it. He's right behind the camera now. You can probably hear him screeching Scrambling along. along. <laughs> there we go. Come on, buddy. There we go. No. Nope. Well, he, he got some off of the... Uh, off the ledge. He's like, no, ledge. I can get yeah, better I there. Can, yeah, I can save her there. <laughs> but yeah, he was just to the, uh, just behind the right him. of the camera. Yeah. He's just far away from the camera. The I'll put it where he can get it without having to. Yeah, exactly right. Come on. He's a uh, very friendly, really. Hey, buddy. Very nice guy. There you go. Is he going for it? 